Are you an aspiring job seeker with dreams of diving into the agile world as a scrum master? The path to becoming a scrum master isn't always a straightforward one. It's filled with challenges, uncertainties, especially if you want to transition from a non-IT field to an IT field. Stay tuned to the latest episode with our guest Pavana Head till the end where she shares her valuable journey to provide valuable insights, her real life experiences, struggles offering you a unique opportunity to navigate your own scrum master path more effectively. Pana comes from a social background where she acted as an advocate for child safety, raising awareness and promoting initiatives to prioritize the protection and well-being of children in a digital space. That is where she got in touch with the digital side of things and soon she realized her calling. She then discovered the job of a scrum master and her journey to become a scrum master began. So without further delay let's dive right in. Bona, welcome to the podcast by Agile Coaching Round Table. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We are thank really thrilled to have you on our show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so today we would want to uh, have a conversation regarding your journey, uh, your journey as a scrum master, job seeker or uh, maybe your uh, passion about becoming a scrum master, right? Uh, and we would uh, want our listeners to learn from your journey and uh, this is part of our new uh, season. Uh, which is on the job and work culture so we would definitely want to understand what was your journey like before you becoming to scrum master and uh, how have you become into scrum master and all those things so to begin with uh, i would like to uh, understand uh, from you that uh, what is your journey from transitioning into the role of scrum master what inspired this career change Sure, sure. So um, I've always been intrigued with mindsets and helping other people. And so I actually have a background in social work and behavior science. So I like to tell this story a lot. Um, when I first majored in social work, my father, he never wanted me to go into social work. He always wanted me to go into IT. And so at the time I was like, you know, I'm not really an IT person because I really believe that IT was all about coding, all about computers, and it was just something that didn't interest me. I was more interested in people and helping people, which is why I went into social work and behavior science. So um, it wasn't until I was introduced to Agile and Scrum Framework when I was assigned um, to a systems migration project with the Department of Human Services. And that's when I realized that there was actually um, an IT role that catered to the health of a team. And so honestly, a social worker and a scrum master, they're very similar, you know, just different arenas. And I understand the assignment of them both. So, um, for example, they both focus on continuous improvement and problem solving, conflict resolution. And most of all, we uh, love helping people set goals and supporting achieving those particular goals. So um, when I discovered this actual role in IT, I was like, okay, this is the direction that I want to go in. And I haven't looked back since. Mm -hmm. That's really uh, amazing to know that you come from a social background, Kwana. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because uh, as you mentioned that it's more into social and it's also uh, into people uh, interactions, trying to help our people, trying to help them in any situation or circumstances. Absolutely. And that really inspired you to look into, you know, uh, an IT professional more into this specific thing as working as a scrum master. And I think that is where few of your ways of working or ways of operating in the social setup definitely resonated or definitely linked uh, to the Scrum Master. That's really amazing to understand uh, from that. And how has that experience uh, influenced your approach as a Scrum Master? 
Yeah, so with my approach, even in social work and in Scrum, I always use the same approach. I approach with the heart of a servant leader. So I always approach as, um, how can I help provide a service? And so, like I stated earlier, um, social workers and scrum masters, they kind of operate from the same point of reference. So they both have strong emotional intelligence, empathy, active listening, um, advocating for others, and definitely take pride in helping people set goals and like guide lead. I'm sorry, like gently guide them and supporting to achieve their goals. So um, I all that's the approach that I always take. I take on the approach of helping and trying to see how I can be of service. Wow, that's so amazing. I mean, I could already see how you have drawn that parallel between uh, your past uh, experience as a social service yes. uh, and then uh, now as a scrum master. So I'm sure that this journey wouldn't have been that easy, right? So we would want to understand what were the biggest challenges you faced during your transition into a Scrum Master and how did you overcome them? Yeah, you know, um, one of <laughs> one of my biggest challenges, and I will say even to this day, this is one of my biggest challenges, networking. Networking, networking, networking. <laughs> <laughs> I have not taken advantage of this strategy at all. And I know that this is a really big strategy to help you, um, you know, get out there and get a job. And so, um, like I said, this is a challenge for me because by nature, I'm an introvert and I don't really like to, um, you know, like join conversations or just reach out to people or do cold calls or anything like that. So what I'm learning is it would be helpful to me in my search if I was to post more on LinkedIn, if I was to join the conversations on LinkedIn, you know, do some comments, write down about, you know, what I'm learning and share it with other people. And that has been one of my major challenges. And I will be honest that I'm still working on overcoming that challenge. I, to, to add to that, I think even if you are not that active or if you find it difficult to engage uh, within the LinkedIn network, I think even I, I see uh, see that networking on LinkedIn is one of the aspect uh, where we talk about networking, but also feel that beyond LinkedIn also there are other you know uh, things with where we can in get involved ourselves as a you know uh, into networking opportunities. Maybe those might be meetups, those might be you know uh, uh, any gatherings in terms of we you know uh, specific to the subject that we are interested of. I, I mean even if it's not related to agile space or even if it's not related to the workspace, but that was something that might interest you to ensure that you know that the the thing that you spoke about being an introvert even i am to some extent an introvert uh, mm. but again it it d depends on the topic of discussion it depends on right. uh, who the people are right so maybe i think to to ensure that we overcome it i most of the time what i have done is try to identify what is your area of interest uh, and try to see if there are like-minded people specific to that subject maybe you can get involved into it i mean even it's on linkedin uh, not not specific to that topic or even if it's external to linkedin right so yes that is one of the things that maybe you can uh, try doing it absolutely thank you for that yes okay since since we are talking about uh, the challenges that you have you know you've been uh, trying to overcome uh, now this challenge is something particular to your uh, trying to land up onto an opportunity into the yes. agile space. Would you like to talk about that as well? Yes. Uh, one of the challenges that I've had actually during the job search is my confidence in interviews. This right here has been something that it took me a minute to overcome. And it took me even longer to learn about the, my, my lack of confidence in the interview. So when I think about confidence, you think about you can have confidence based off of what you know and based off what you understand. And so what I was doing before is, you know, maybe like other job seekers, they will go online and Google, you know, Scrum Master interview questions <laughs> and then, pre <laughs> then prepare from the Scrum, Matter, Scrum Master interview questions, right? 
So, and then you go into the interview and you're kind of like trying to remember from what you learned from that. That didn't work for me. I learned that I learned, it took me some time to learn that, but I learned that that didn't work for me. So I took it to a different space and I started to prepare by understanding. Because if you can get an understanding and if you can get knowledge, then you'll have confidence. So um, what I mean by that is that I started to try to understand, you know, my role, my skills, the values that I will offer to the team, and definitely the foundation of whatever field you're trying to interview for. So I feel like if you actually understand and know from that level, you'll be able to answer any interview question. And that helps you with your confidence because you once you know things and once you understand things, no one can take that from you. And that's where the confidence comes from. So that's a challenge that I have definitely dealt with. Wow, that is so amazing point. I mean, uh, this uh, immediately clicked something in my mind. So uh, our first uh, interview uh, in this series was with Anuradha Arvind Raj. And I, I'm sure you know her. And uh, she exactly mentioned the same point. So what she mentioned was do not prepare for the job interview. You prepare for the job role, right? Uh, or the role of the scrum master. So exactly. that's exactly what even you are talking about, right? And uh, I understand this space wherein if you are like just uh, trying to prepare for the questions or maybe you are just preparing uh, just within the limitations of the questions is when it's like uh, some new question is been asked or maybe the follow-up question is asked. Then you are, it's like it comes as an out of syllabus for you, right? Then you get nervous. Oh, I don't know what should be done yeah, or uh, how should I say? Then, because already you are transitioning to the new role, uh, which itself is the biggest thing. And now, if something comes out of the syllabus, then it, you are like, you, I mean, it just uh, kicks so much of nervousness uh, during the interview. And that is why I think uh, the uh, lack of confidence uh, comes into the picture. I Absolutely. completely understand what, uh, what you say. Absolutely. So, maybe uh, uh, to just expand to this, uh, I would also like to understand how has engaging with agile community such as attending meetups or conferences uh, which Vivek mentioned right helped you in your transitioning journey yeah I definitely um, have a few community of practices that I join weekly so um, and I also attend meetups and it really helps me just to learn from other people and to hear about their journey and to hear about their on the job experience and things that they're doing that really helps me and it also helps you know build up confidence and then just to know what to look forward to so i definitely that is one of my practices is to have meetups and um, join community of practices every week. I, I believe that I join uh, about three community of practices a week. <laughs> For sure. Wow. <laughs> yes, I do. So, I think Connor, that is where maybe your uh, first step would be in terms of networking, right? I mean, this is again an opportunity for you to network. Uh, maybe it's if it's if it is related to meetups, even if it's related to conferences, you get to know or get to meet so many people, and that would uh, again is a one-to-one -one interaction or as a group interaction that still yes. gives you an opportunity to in, uh, network, right? So yes, that's that's a good starting point, or maybe it's a good uh, 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 space for you to be, you know, in case if you are trying to get out of that uh, introvert zone. Exactly. Exactly. And since you mentioned that you you are part of many uh, meetups or conferences, and I'm I'm maybe would like to check with you. And do you do you have any kind of a mentor or in a, a person whom you can reach out to anytime if you are you know into a situation where you are nervous or you need some kind of a guidance or help, any sort of those. So would you like to talk about that as well? Yes, having a mentor is a must not just transitioning over into scrum but if you're transitioning into any new career you have to have a mentor that is a must because a mentor is going to help support you they're going to help guide you you know they're going to help keep you accountable um one of the biggest things that i have is fear and i've set limitations over myself due to fear and so mentors help you to break out of those limitations and that fear setup. 
And so one of the greatest lessons that I've learned from a mentor is that when you're ha- when you're having fear of failure, you shouldn't. Because fear is an opportunity to learn. And so you should never be afraid to learn. And so a mentor is a must. <laughs> it is a must. You need someone who's already been there. You need someone who already has the experience and that's willing to help you to learn what where, what what they've learned already. So no need to, you know, invent, reinvent the and reinvent the wheel. So yes, a mentor is a must. Wow, this is so amazing. Uh, yes, I do agree that uh, mentors help you to overcome uh, your fears or maybe break those uh, uh, those limitations that you have s- uh, set for yourself and uh, break those glass ceilings, if we have to say so. And uh, yes, I mean, having a mentor uh, with someone who is experienced in this uh, similar field or maybe a similar uh, uh, workspace, right? So that really helps you in uh, getting out of uh, such uh, fearful uh, situations or maybe uh, breaking uh, those uh, glass ceilings for ourselves, right? Uh, Yes, uh, that's a very valid point that you have uh, made. Uh, So, since now uh, I understand that you have transitioned already into the Scrum Master, I know you do have experience as a Scrum Master. So, I would like to know what advice would you give to individuals who are considering this career transition to become a scrum master or at least starting their journey uh, into agile yes um this this is a really good question because my sister she's actually transitioning into scrum and i just asked her two questions when she you know told me about her wanting to come into scrum and so one of the questions was i asked her i said do you truly have a heart to support others in achieving their goals through the good the bad the ugly do you have the grace and the patience to do this and to work with people while they're achieving goals because it can get you know it can get a little rough at times so when that question is yes then i say okay well, do you have the determination and the perseverance to put in the time, the effort, and to seek the knowledge of learning the technical part of Scrum and agility? And so normally if a person can answer yes to both of those, then I think they're good. I think they're good. That, that's a really wonderful uh, perspective, Konawar. I mean, uh, that's a really uh, uh, insightful and a, uh, and a good uh, tip for someone who would like to jump into this uh, and it, I think that that makes more sense uh, for anyone who would like to uh, explore this opportunity or maybe explore into this space uh, and since we, we are you know uh, talking about that uh, also since we are into an agile space where we talk about you know continuous improvement or you know uh, self-improving or self-reflecting uh, while doing that reflecting on to how we are operating and all those kind of a thing what are the things that you do in your day-to-day routine or to keep yourself ensured that you are into the you know the right uh, learning space yes so i stay learning <laughs> i stay learning and like i stated earlier i'm in a number of community of practices so you know i reach out to other scrum masters and i learn from their experiences also but i have this type of i don't want to call it weird but it's like a maybe a different and kind of boring hobby where I actually enjoy doing trainings. <laughs> I've taken so many <laughs> trainings. <laughs> so I will just take a training just to take it. And so I take a lot of trainings. I do a lot of e-learning courses on LinkedIn because continuous improvement is a must. But for that to be a hobby, I think that's different, but that is definitely my hobby because I'm trying to learn more. I'm trying to move forward. I'm not trying to move backwards. You know, I don't have time for that. So um, I just keep myself in a space of learning. So uh, it, I won't say it's, it has a, a bad habit because as no. long as you're learning something from those trainings, so there is no stopping, right? If you're exactly. doing this training just because you want to collect those certifications mm-hmm. and put it uh, under your cap, then I would definitely not recommend. But if you are doing these uh, trainings, one, as a hobby, and two, because you want to get some learning out of it, then uh, that's a good habit to have, I would say. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that's really good. Uh, so, maybe I would want to uh, just uh, understand as the next thing. 
So as you transition into this new role, mm-hmm. how do you plan to strike a balance between your career aspirations and personal growth? I mean, you partially answered uh, this in the previous one, but if you want to just elaborate uh, on this. Yeah, yeah, I can because um, you know, being a scrum master, it's already a balance between my career and my personal growth because I actually see it as a calling. So supporting others with shifting their mindset, you know, continuously improving, gaining understanding, navigating through, uh, you know, a so-called failure and working towards becoming their best selves personally and professionally. To me, that's not just a job, but it's actually a calling. So it's already balanced for me um, with Scrum. That That's just, I feel like that's my calling. So it's already balanced. Mm-hmm. And how do your contributions to uh, agile committees such as writing or maybe you know speaking or coaching you know, at times uh, or, or your volunteering services uh, help you? Well, that's that's the same thing that I um, spoke of earlier. I just make sure that my main thing is to make sure that I'm helping others to achieve their goals. That is something that's in my heart to do is to help with goals. And you know, like in Scrum, we have goals. We have the product goal, we have the sprint goals, and you're trying to help gradually, you know, achieve that goal. Yeah, I know that uh, uh, may, uh, I know that not many people will uh, know that, but I know for the fact that you silently mentor people. I know that no. you're being very diplomatic and humble by not talking about it, but I know for the fact that uh, maybe offline, not in the, in front of social media or something like that. I know that yeah. you do mentor and coach people, and uh, uh, I I think that if you are already doing that, why not talk about it, right? You should be talking about it so that more people would reach out to you, and you can help them achieve their goals as you uh, always uh, talk about, right? So I think you should be more vocal about it so that people know that you are out there to help people and help them in their journey uh, who are transitioning into scrum masters because uh, this is what i believe right i mean not everyone is in the same uh, uh, journey as yours maybe when i say mm-hmm. same journey i mean not in the same path they could be behind you they could some people could be uh, uh, i mean uh, way uh, forward than you uh, but not at the same uh, uh, pace right so maybe talking about your journey your uh, uh, helping nature or maybe talking about your coaching skills people will definitely learn something uh, new in their journey so they can your journey could be relatable to many such aspiring scrum masters right so maybe i think you should be more vocal about it i agree with you on that ramya because i definitely help people in what i like to call in a secret place um i'm i'm not out and about you know I'm not very to the forefront I'm used to being in the background that that's always been like a part of my nature is to help in the background so I definitely agree with you on that and thank you thank you for that that's that's an intuitive instinct I would say that you know even if it's it's a good thing that we keep on doing we we feel you know no I don't want to get into that limelight maybe put that yeah. limelight to someone else don't please excuse me out of this that is yeah. I really understand it Exactly. Yes. So uh, maybe as a last uh, uh, question uh, for this conversation, uh, what are your long-term career goals as Scrum Master, and uh, how do you envision yourself contributing to uh, agile practices? I see myself as um, I feel like Scrum is um, getting me into the door scrum masters getting me into the door but I really see myself as an agile coach I've always seen myself as a coach um, which is why I went into um, social work I've always enjoyed coaching it just brings it feeds my soul so um, I see myself as working more towards um, agile coaching okay and though I have said this is the last question I have uh, one typical question, like an interview question uh, that people do. So if uh, given an opportunity, uh, if you want to let uh, the recruiters know or pass on that message, why should someone hire you as a Scrum Master? Sure. So I would say 
if you desire someone that truly cares for the health of your team and someone who understands the assignment of a scrum master, please reach out. I am open to coffee chats and I'm even more open to interviews. <laughs> so reach out. Wow, amazing. Uh, that's a very uh, good way or subtle way to pass on that uh, message. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, Pana, for doing thank this today. And me. thank you so much for being vulnerable. I in, Throughout this conversation, I know how vulnerable you were. And I know you have uh, so, mu- so much uh, nervousness going on inside. But you still over overcame that, and you agreed to do this uh, and shared your journey through vulnerability, and that is the biggest quality as Scrum Master. And I wish you all the best in this journey, and thank you so much for uh, giving out uh, time for us and doing this uh, podcast with us. Any time for you all, any time for you all, and thank you again. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching this episode patiently till the end. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll meet you again in the next episode. Till then, if you like our podcast show, then do like, share, subscribe and let us know your feedback in the comment section. You can also listen to the episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music and Audible. Thank you.